Hi everyone! I wanted to make a quick video talking about infinity and some specific misconceptions about it that relate to when theists want to present the Kalam cosmological argument. One thing they say in support of the second premise is that the past can't be infinite. And I have heard of two reasons why that is. Now let's be clear about this. I'm not saying whether the past is infinite or not. Uh, I, I don't know. It could be. But then again, there are cosmological models where it isn't. It's an open question as far as I'm concerned. What I want to address are some specific reasons why some people think it's impossible for time, the past, to be uh, infinite. Uh, like I said, theists usually. One reason is that if the past were infinite, apparently we couldn't be in the present because the present follows after an infinite past and you can't traverse an infinite past. So the fact that we are in the present, which we are by definition, disproves um, an infinite past. That's one objection. Another objection I've heard is that you can't add to infinity. So if the past were infinite, we wouldn't keep having new days. Now, these are both based on misunderstandings about infinity, and I'm going to try to fix them here. I'm going to try to explain why these are not valid objections. So let's start with the first one. We can phrase it in a syllogism as follows. One, today is day number x. Two, it's not possible to count to infinity. Three, therefore x has a finite value. Four, therefore the past is finite. Non sequitur. Now I'll give you one, two, and three, but four doesn't follow. What follows from one, two, and three is that we have been counting days for a finite period. Not that the past is finite, only that the period during which we have been counting days is finite. Now, the response to this is obviously going to be, well, we have been counting days since the beginning. Okay, cool. Let's fix the argument. Let's rewrite premise one to take that into account. One, today is day number x since the beginning of time. Then the rest seem to follow. Except now we have assumed that time has a beginning. In other words, that time is finite into the past in the first premise. But that's the conclusion we're trying to reach. So we have replaced the non sequitur with making the argument circular. So it doesn't work. What people fail to understand is what it means for the past to be infinite. It's not that it starts and then an infinite period follows and then comes the present. After an infinite unending period has ended. No, no, no. It means that there was no beginning. So if it has no beginning, then yes, today is day number X since we started counting. But no matter when we started counting, there was a day before the day we started counting. Every day has a preceding day. That's what it means for the past to be infinite. The other objection that you can't add to infinity is something that I think is based on a misunderstanding of mathematical terminology. It is indeed true that infinity plus one is an undefined operation. That's because addition is only defined for numbers and infinity is not a number. But what we can do is add one to x and let x go to infinity and compare that to just x when x goes to infinity. What it means that something goes to infinity is that it grows without an upper bound. There is no limit to how high it can get. And uh, if we do that, we find this. x and x plus one. Okay, we're gonna let x grow without limit. In other words, we take the limit when x goes to infinity. We're going to do the same down here. This, well, the limit of a number that goes to infinity is 
infinity, obviously. This one, of course, also goes to infinity because this is going to be one bigger than this one, and one bigger than infinity doesn't have an upper bound either. One, one bigger than something that has no upper limit still has no upper limit. So this is also infinite. So in this sense, we can add to infinity, and using sloppy language, we can phrase it like this. Infinity plus 1 equals infinity. Again, this is sloppy language. This is not mathematically accurate. But that's one way to interpret this in non-technical terms. So you can, in that sense, add to infinity. You just don't do anything. Nothing happens. So what some people might think this means is that the same day would just repeat itself over and over again. Or we could add a new day, but time would still not progress. We are at t equals infinity. Time has stopped. No matter what we do, we're still going to be stuck there. So either we're doing the Groundhog Day thing, or, you know, day number infinity keeps repeating because we can't add more days, or we hit the temporal equivalent of a brick wall. That's not what it means. We can add to infinity in one meaningful sense, but if we're using technical terminology, we're not adding. We are taking a union. So what do I mean by that? Well, let me show you. Let's take the set of all positive integers. goes on forever. This is an infinite set. I'm not, these dots mean keeps going forever, okay? So these are all positive integers. You'll notice that zero is not in this set. So we can create a new set, which is the union of this set and a set containing nothing but zero. This is not addition in the technical sense. This is a union. So we create this new set, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, these have the same number of elements. That might sound strange, I've added a new one, but, you know, infinity plus 1 is still infinity, and we're, I can give you a proof for that here. 1 connects to 0, 2 connects to 1. 3 connects to 2, 4 to 3, and so on. n connects to n minus 1. For every n here, there is an n minus 1 here. It's a 1 to 1 correspondence, a bijection. That's what we mean when we say that two sets have the same cardinality. In other words, they have the same number of elements in them. So adding a new element didn't change the number of elements. But something has changed, something very meaningful. This set has an element in it that this one doesn't. So if I remove all these from both sets, I still have zero left. So in that sense, I have done something. The fact that this set is infinite does not mean that it's full. It doesn't mean that it contains everything. It doesn't contain zero. This one does. So I have meaningfully added to infinity. Just not by the mathematical meaning of addition. In the same manner, we can have an infinite set of days, the days in the past, and we can add today to that. And tomorrow, we can add tomorrow to that. And so on. We are not changing the cardinality of the set of all days so far, but we are still adding new days. So none of these objections work. Um, please stop using them. 
They're based on misunderstandings about infinity. And if you want to clear up your misunderstandings of infinity, I recommend you take a course at brilliant.org, the sponsor of this video. They have a course about infinity specifically, and uh, I've taken it. It's really good. Uh, I didn't really learn anything from that course. I just brushed up on stuff I already knew, but haven't been using since college. I like doing it. That's what I do mainly with Brilliant. But I also learn new stuff. Most recently, I've been looking into their courses about AI, a subject that's new to me. At Brilliant, you can take interactive online courses in subjects like math, physics, and computer science from basic to advanced level. It's aimed at everyone, from students to professionals to lifelong learners, everyone who's interested in learning new skills for using their personal or professional lives. There are literally thousands of lessons available, with more content being added monthly, and you can take whatever lessons you want at your own pace. Each lesson features interactive exercises that award you XP if you get them right. And I really love that because it gives you an incentive to actually do the exercises and it makes the learning fun and efficient. Doing exercises really is the best way to learn. And I say that as a professional educator. Use the link below, brilliant.org slash 81 to get started on your free 30-day trial period today. The first 200 to sign up will get a 20% discount on their annual fee. That's it for this time. See ya.